Otherwise, density are not the same. Newton law cannot be applied. Okay. In reality, normally viscosity density change with respect to temperature. So if you want to solve this problem correctly, you need to solve momentum transport problem and energy transport problem simultaneously. That means you need to set up shear balance for momentum and shear balance for energy. Then you, you end up with two differential equations. You need to solve these two equations at the same time. But that would be difficult. When you have system of differential equation to be solved at the same time, that's hard. So normally, we will start with one equation first, solving one before the other. In this problem, whether or not you solve momentum to get velocity profile first and then take velocity profile back into energy equation to get a temperature profile, right? Because in our temperature profile, this system contains convection. You have convection in this system, okay? In order to find out how much heat is transferred by convection, you will need to know velocity profile. If you do not know velocity, then you cannot calculate heat by convection. So convection, the velocity is crucial in this case. So you need to determine what kind of assumption you need to make in order to solve this equation easily. In this case, if you make assumption that density and viscosity does not change much with respect to temperature, then you can solve velocity profile independently from energy transport equation and then use this apply to energy transport equation later. That can be done. But in some other cases, it might not be applied like this. So please do not remember that momentum transport must be solved first. That's not true. Okay? It really depends on problem. All right? So, if you assume that velocity profile is somewhat independent from temperature profile, then you get this equation. Now you can consider temperature or consider energy. You have temperature here, suppose this is T0, this is Tb. What kind of temperature profile that you are expecting here? Do you expect linear temperature profile first of all? Is temperature profile supposed to be linear? How do you know that? How do you determine whether it's linear or not? If there is only conduction, is the temperature is linear? Can you see that? If you have conduction only, then Fourier law is applied. Fourier law is Q equal to minus K del T, right? If you integrate that, you get linear equation, just like what we did earlier. But right, right now, we have conduction and convection. So convection term is complicated. It's dealing with velocity. So complicated equation like that, when you integrate it, there is no way it come back to linear. So equation here, or temperature profile here, is suspected to be nonlinear. It may be something like this, okay? Or it may be something like this. Is it possible? Is the second line here possible? Can we have some certain point in our system with temperature higher than both ends. Think carefully. Now, the increase in temperature 
means the increase in internal energy of the system. The higher the energy, the higher the temperature, because temperature is just an index to show energy, right? So, if you give the system high enough energy, temperature can exceed the boundaries. How can we supply energy to the system? By work. So if you give enough work here, work that's given to the fluid can be converted into internal energy of the fluid and then temperature of the fluid can rise higher than both ends. Okay? That works is done by fluid motion. Okay? Now just keep in mind first thing and foremost, there'll be nonlinear term. Okay? But whether or not you have this one exceeding T B and T0, it depends on how fast you move here. If you move it fast enough, it would heat it up, right? In in our common language, we normally say that there's enough friction. When you put enough energy or put enough friction in the system, they'll be heated up. But it's not really a friction that causes energy to increase. It works. It is work that causes energy to increase. Okay? So, if the temperature that you expect, the temperature profile that you expect it look like this, what does the shell look like for temperature, um, for energy balance? Is it the same as momentum balance? In this case, the shell for energy balance supposed to be the same. It looks the same with the thickness here, delta x. But it may not always the same. In some problem, it may be the same. In another problem, it might not be the same. Okay? So if I have shell like this, what is my input? That's supposed to be flux. In which direction? In x direction. So that's Ex at x. Multiplying by area perpendicular to it. The area, suppose my rod here has length L and width here W. So the area would be WL. Okay? For output, it will be the same. Is there any external force acting upon the system? Is there any force? Sometimes this might be confusing, but as long as the velocity of the top plate here remains constant, if the velocity here is constant, velocity there is constant equal to zero, there will be no force, right? According to Newton's law, the object moving at the same speed, constant speed, would be free from force, free from external force. If you apply force, there will be acceleration. In this case, there is no acceleration, so there is no external force. The only force that, can, that may be applied is gravity force. But gravity force in this case goes in different direction from the movement of fluid. So there will be no, we, we, we will not consider that gravity force to be our external force. All right? Then, is there any production of energy? Is there any other form of work supplying to the system? No. So just in and out. Okay? So in minus out, so you have WL EX at X minus EX at X plus delta X equal to zero as steady state. 
if you multiply by w l delta x take a limit you end up with differential equation d of e x by d x equal to zero or e x equal to a constant now according to our combined flux equation If you want to write down for x component, this is ex. Q will be qx. Oops, plus one over two rho. Is this vvx? Should we convert this one to x component as well? No, because the whole thing here is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is scalar depends on magnitude of combined velocity. So you need to keep this as the combined magnitude of the velocity. Plus rho h. What about this one? Is it vx? In this case, yes, this is vx. Because this is energy carried by this velocity. Okay, if we consider velocity in x direction only, the energy that carry in this component is multiplied by Vx plus um, tau here is tensor. Tensor has three, nine components. When it dot with um, vector V, the whole thing here is reduced to three components. Okay, you can split it out you get tau xx vx plus tau xy vy plus tau xz vz. Okay, where tau xz here, you can use Newton law equal to minus mu dvc by dx plus dvx by dz. Now, if you look at each term, can be expressed it using Fourier law, dt by dx. Question is, can I use total differentiation here? Should it be partial differentiation? In order to answer that, you need to know or you need to see whether temperature is function of x only. Does temperature change in y and z direction? No. So that means temperature is function of x only. You can use it or you can write it down in total differentiation. All right? Now, second term, can this